interest to uh, to everybody around the table, um, and more broadly speaking, the, the community, and therefore I'm interested. At the same time, uh, recognize that fire being a general manager really does know the issues inside and out, and also how they impact uh, the overall operation, and, and therefore the more appropriate response. So. Please. Pleasure to get everybody together, and, and thanks again, Fari, for coming. I was mentioning out front, got a little bit sideways, but mentioning out front how, how busy your your days are, because I can fully appreciate those and others. Thank you very and may much. I ask yeah, one just well. point of order, which is, sure. which, I mean, my memory is bad, and I can't note take and speak at the same time so easily. Do you mind if I record this meeting? Would that be okay? Oh, that's your call. Yeah. I, uh, okay. call on yeah, I know it's like California law that you have to ask permission, so everyone's good with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. And I appreciate that. It's my own note-taking. That's the only reason. Um, thank you, Mayor Phillips, and thank you, Farhad. I know you're both very busy people. I know as well the neighborhood is as well, and the people who are here who represent, uh, well, they are from, they span multiple neighborhoods. Um, uh, did, did we go all the way around the table? We did. We did. We did. Okay, so and I think you... It is failing you, Richard. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Gary likes to keep me on my toes. Uh, we like to keep Gary on his toes. It goes both ways. So, you know, I don't think there's many surprises here. So we briefed you. We all sent some questions through to John and Matthew, CC, um, Mayor Phillips on the 24th of December. Um, and I think, you know, the first thing on our minds that's in this list, let's just go through this like an agenda, if you will, is I think many of us are concerned and you can help us by understanding and mitigating and what you're planning to do. And I think is the, the impact of the train on downtown San Rafael. So the train uh, is going to be stopping at downtown San Rafael. I don't know if it's going to go to onto Larkspur or not. But my understanding is four times an hour, a train will pass through downtown San Rafael. Railroad barriers will go down. And, you know, I think it's, it's fair to say there will be some degree of impact um, that will add to the existing impact on the 101 traffic and it's foreseeable um, that could be anywhere between moderate to severe but it's speculation in this room at this point there is no document or plan or forecast or model anyone has seen to date for this possibly foreseeable major concern that's going to affect everyone who travels on 101. I think that that's everyone around this table, uh, especially 101 commuters. We don't want to see that uh, get much worse. It's already fairly bad. And so the question I presented to you back on the 10th, 24th is, this is a foreseeable issue. And it's going to, if it's bad, this traffic impact, uh, we should be mitigating it. We should be doing things about it, or at least going into this forewarned and aware of what the impact would be. I think, Mayor Phillips, this is going to have significant impact to the city that you govern, um, and I think it impacts us. So I suggest, I don't just suggest, I think it is a reasonable measure that a study is undertaken to measure that traffic impact because it is a foreseeable situation that will adversely affect many people. Is that something you can reassure us you will do? No. No, let me brief you on something different. Um, the way public works projects in California are um, processed is you come up with a concept, and SMART was a concept. You then go secure funding, and SMART went and got the funding. You then have to go through an environmental impact study, and SMART went through an entire environmental impact study and studied the entire 70 miles. And that goes through many, 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 many hearings that took place in the early 2000s and all the way to 2006. And this is called California, uh, CEQA is the acronyms, California um, Environmental Quality Act, CEQA. And SMART went through this study, and as I said, with many public hearings, and at the end, I think was summer of 2006, uh, they completed, they responded to all the comments, they did all the technical analysis, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. They looked at uh, everything from traffic to noise to um, biology, you name it, and everything that came up through these public hearings. 
Um, and then the final environmental impact report was certified by Smart Board. This is all before my time. That is when the project then moves to the next phase, which is preliminary design. And then once they finish the design, then you go through the permit process and begin construction. Okay, okay. that's, just, of yeah, course, of course. Because I, this is, um, you know, information that, uh, you know, I didn't know much about prior to this meeting, but did this environmental impact report actually study what what would happen in intersections or uh, on 101? Did Not they actually take a look at what no. would happen to 101 when the train I came don't, through? I don't. Well, I mean, is it specific to our I, region? I, I don't remember if it went, because this was before my time. Uh -huh. I can't tell you which intersections it looked at. Yeah. I can tell you that downtown San Rafael traffic impact mm -hmm. was one of the major focus of the study. This document, by the way, is available on our website. Okay. It's a public document. I have read it. I do right. not see any record or uh, consideration made of the closure of those streets, and I find that surprising, and I ask you to address that gap because I think it is a gap that we, as all San Rafael residents, right. and I would think the mayor also would be concerned right. about. So let now, me, you may let not have covered let it Let me yet. finish because i got to give you the full picture. So once the environmental impact report is finalized, certified, there is an appeal period. Then there is a lawsuit period where anybody who has an issue with this can actually challenge it. All of those are gone. And now that I'm here, I've been here about 15 months, we're in the middle of the construction. And the purpose I wanted to have a meeting with you instead of going back and forth to your questions we're done with study, we're done with planning, we're into construction. So we are not going back and looking at things that was there or was not there or because one citizen, and I mean this with respect, I'm being straightforward because my job is to give you the information and not play games. You know, we're in the middle of construction, we're in the final sections of the design for the San Rafael area we cannot afford to go back every time a neighborhood said stop. We want you to go back and look at something all over again, whether it was or it wasn't, because different people at different times come and look at for different questions. For example, in some of your questions, you say, well, you look at the noise from so many feet away, mm -hmm. but I think there should be half of that. Mm -hmm. Beyond all of that. When was the vote passed for the train? What was the date? The, the funding or no, the, the date the voters? 2006. No, the vote the, the date the voters approved the smart train was 2009, was it not? No, 2009 is when the funding was done. When was the, when did voters approve the train to occur? Enable the train to? That was a state law. No, so there was a vote that put a court of cent on the sales tax. That's the funding. funding. And without oh, that, this funding. would not have been possible. What year was that? Um, um, 2009. Was so I the think funding. the reality, so I think it's fair to say the reality that the train would happen did not hit people until 2009. So was this period of legal lawsuits and approval periods completed before that point? Uh -huh. So that seems rather strange to me. Not. That's how it is done. That's uh, why no, I'm not going to argue I'm with not, you. No, I'm just back. making an observation. I think right. that seems strange to me because this was all done and dusted and then the boat was presented to people and the reality mm, dawned that this no, train was the coming. The boat was presented to people on the funding mechanism, not whether SMART should happen or not. Uh, SMART took place in 2003, was a state law that created SMART. That's when it was happening. After the smart so was there was public created. involvement in that 2003 it's a state, state law? law. That's how was there a public state. vote on that state law? No, state law in California is done by the state assembly, state senate, and mm -hmm. the governor signs, and it's assembly bill 224 is yeah. how it was created. Do you care about the concerns of citizens and the, the road users of 101? You know, this is a kind of question that doesn't get us anywhere. Well, I'm hoping it does. No, it doesn't, because I just explained to you that we are in the middle of construction. So mm -hmm. for you to want to turn the clock back to 10 years ago and ask the questions, do you care about Highway 101? Of course I care about Highway 101, but I'm here, 
and I'm tasked with building the smart as it was approved, as it was funded, as it has cleared its environmental. So the reason really I want to make sure that we you know, are clear with you. Smart is happening. It's not a concept anymore. Mm -hmm. Smart is in the middle of construction. And smart is processing and we're complying with every rules and mitigation that we're required to do. If there is opportunity to do something better, be happy to look into that. But what we're not going to do is go back to the beginning and say, is smart a good idea or not? Because I'm going to well, be straight with you. Wait a minute. That's not on the table. No, 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 I, I, I talk, then, then you can talk, Richard. Because what I'm not going to get into is a whole bunch of back and forth questions that doesn't solve anything, a whole bunch of emails that we've been exchanging with you that doesn't solve anything. Here, here is the issue. Smart is happening. We're in construction. And we're under a certain obligation by the people's vote and by the state law to deliver this project. Uh, many other things have happened in your community that has made you not happy, you know, the affordable housing and other issues. Now, we're, we're happy with affordable the, housing. That's the they densities. have nothing to do with SMART. So I'd be happy to discuss SMART project with you, but what I will not do is go back and start from beginning and 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 debate with you whether it's a good project, whether the process uh, Brian, was right. Or I, I feel I need to take this. First of all, this question has nothing to do with going back to the beginning of the project whatsoever. Nothing at all. This is basically a request. Uh, I understand the process you have been through, and it's very helpful that you take us through that process. In no way are we suggesting that you go back to the beginning. We are making a suggestion that we think it is a reasonable action to be taken. We do not see this, for, this, this foreseeable thing covered in previous documents. We think it is a reasonable action. We think we're making a reasonable request, not to stop the train from happening. We, we know it's happening. We're just making the reasonable request. It's foreseeable. This is going to create a significant backup on 101. Mayor Phillips is going to be accused perhaps in three years' time of why didn't you foresee this? And well, I'm let, me, let, me, let, me, let me comment on that. Um, I mentioned earlier that we do have, um, and we have addressed uh, the, the, the issues as they pertain to San Rafael. Uh, we've created uh, this committee specifically with regard to San Rafael. It's on the smart board, but there is an impact to San Rafael. Right. In particular, um, the crossings and the quiet zones. And working with SMART, we've got uh, the funding in place for the quiet zones at each location that we as a community decide that's appropriate. And uh, we've talked about that process. We will go through a public hearing process to determine whether or not it's in the best interest of the community to provide for those uh, quiet zones. And first blush, you would say, of course. Well, I'm saying, of course, but let's make sure that the community understands the, the consequences. Um, so we have, we have that in place. We have also insisted upon, through uh, to an audience here in, uh, that where the crossings take place in downtown San Rafael, that we've got traffic signals timed uh, appropriately and, and uh, uh, taken into consideration the frequency of, of uh, smart um, travel to, to mitigate that to the extent possible. We're faced with uh, the fact that the train is coming, so we're planning uh, as best we can given the circumstances to accommodate everybody that's impacted by this, and there will be an impact. It's not going to be zero impact. We know that, but the real fact is, are we going to be best prepared through signalization, other things we have control over, to to uh, to make that impact as, as little as possible? Now, that's where we're at. We're you don't know how much that impact will be, even though it's foreseeable well, it, it, or it, could it, 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 Here, that's not the issue, Richard. The issue is to, to minimize that impact, whatever that is. If it's here, if it's here, whatever. Minimize, it but it still may not be unacceptable. Well, no, no, no. It, 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 that's not the issue. The yeah. issue is to, to reduce it to the absolute minimum. Uh, I would disagree. I think the residents of this city want it to be at an acceptable level. And no. That we should be represented it's, for it that. Is, the train has been approved by the voters to come to town. We can reduce it to the absolute minimum possible. That's our charge. We can't right. reduce it to zero because the train is coming to town, folks. 
Can and I so just ask a simple question? Sure. Okay, I didn't know till last night that this train was going to run four times an hour. Could you? Uh, is this mm. going to run more frequently at commute time, or is it going to run continuously all during the day? So, so if I can answer it this way, Richard throws a lot of words. If I don't take him on on every single word, for the record, does not mean I agree or his statement is true. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay? Yes. Because he uses um, interesting, fancy words. There is a foreseeable problem. Therefore, you need to do something. Mm-hmm. No, that's his statement. There is no foreseeable problem. There is no problem. He's guessing, and then he says, I want you to go study if my guess is right. So just for the record, when I'm quiet, doesn't mean I agree. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. just, I just want to have everybody opportunity to talk. The service is contemplated to be every 30 minutes during the morning commute, midday service, and every 30 minute evening commute. And we have not finalized our um, weekend demand. Mm. So it's going to be kind of like the ferry service, where they don't run it as often during the non commute time. It, it's, so it isn't, the service isn't as busy during the middle of the day as it will be at commute time. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. um, how many times an hour will the railroad crossings go down in peak commute? I don't remember the number. EIR tells you all of those exactly no. down to the intersection. I'm just asking a specific question. You said the train is going, it's contemplated to go every 30 minutes. That's, the, that's what the operation is And it is would go, designed. in theory, each way, correct? Every correct. 30 minutes. And so I make that four times an hour. Does I, that seem correct? Uh, no. It doesn't seem And I'm not to. sitting here arguing with you on and forgive me, that I, number. I'm, not, I'm no. only trying to find out just to understand the facts, that's all. No, I'm, no, I'm you're not, that. Richard. You take one number, you throw it, you debate it, and nope. then you build on it. No, nope. well, This has been the background of what is going on. Nope. Uh, Mr. No. Mr. No. Yes, sir. This is uh, the passenger service. Yes, correct. sir. What about the freight service? The freight service does not come south of Highway 37. If it, ha- if it comes south of Highway 37, it has to go through an entire operational analysis, environmental analysis, permit analysis, many, many, many public hearings in order for the freight service, which is not part of SMART, to be able to get such a permit. Would we be voting on that? If that it's not a vote. It's a process. Yeah, I understand that, but, but it would not come up as a proposition or anything like that to no, the voters. No, no. Okay. I, I don't think, think it's contemplated at this right. point. They are not the contemplating right it. Okay. I, think it's I haven't heard any even rumor right. that they be coming south of Highway 37, mm-hmm. but I can tell you yeah. what a private enterprise will do a decade from now. What is the length of time from one end of the trip to the other end? From which end to which end? Either end. What is it? Well, wh- how long does it take from the train to go from the furthest north station to San Rafael? So right now, the furthest we're going will be north of Santa Rosa. To Windsor? No. no. Oh. North of Santa Rosa yeah. to downtown San Rafael. Okay. That's the first phase we're And building. how long will the train at ride take? At this point, we're looking at 55 to 62, three minutes. Again, okay. operation mm-hmm. is doing analysis. Okay. We'll run simulations, and then we start running it and finalizing. Yeah. What that's, will the speed be through of the train? Is there a maximum speed between uh, certain stations like downtown San Rafael? Maximum Rome? speed is um, allowed at uh, 69 miles an hour, uh-huh. and the speed varies. Yes. Some places as little as 10 miles, some places as much as 69. Is there a place where it's limited, like downtown San Rafael? Because of downtown San Rafael, okay. you're, li- you're limited because you're coming to a stop. Right. No, but is there any other speed limit, say, between uh, Civic Center and downtown no, San Rafael? there are Rafael? no speed limits. You design, in, okay. the, in the world of rail, you design your facility based on your operational needs. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you're taking into account the characteristics of the area. Okay. And if the more denser... Right, then you want to slow down more. Yes. If you have a bridge, then you want to slow down more. Where you have a straight section, yes. you want to make up the time for it. Yes. Yeah. The whole idea is 
who are you serving, mm -hmm. and what are the constraints of that service. So now, downtown San Rafael yes. is one of the busiest transit hub in, Cal in Bay Area because many, many bus service originates from it. So our goal is to get the passengers to their destination, downtown San Rafael, in time that they can catch most, if not all, of those bus services. How long so will you then go backwards and you calculate and mm -hmm. see if you can make that. Understood. Okay, so there's no limit. Forgive me. I'm trying to get back to the specific Carol, question. Did I I I did I yeah, yeah. I was just, those were just yeah. logistic so no questions. Speed, no. I didn't okay. know. How long are the barriers down for when the train goes through, roughly? Um, if everything works well, it is estimated that it be about 30 seconds to one minute. But remember, this is the design, right? Mm -hmm. So, and again, everything there is in the EIR that shows when it's down, what does it do to the level of service, what does it do to traffic pack up. Can, mm -hmm. I, can I ask then, wh yes. what time do you pr assume they're going to start running in the morning? Mm -hmm. You mean earliest? Yes. Mm -hmm. We haven't finalized that yet. At this point, my best estimate for you, and it's an estimate, is we will probably be going through San Rafael somewhere around 5.30 a.m., coming southbound. And when is it the latest one at night? Um, I, I think it's going to be 7 or 8-ish so p.m. So there will be no service on the tracks south of 37 between 8 p.m. and 5.30 a.m.? Correct. Or in, in that ballpark, right? We're still finalizing that. Stuff. Okay. Thank you. That's for you some information. Right. So, Farhan, if I may, um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for giving us your time. I understand you are very busy, and uh, the purpose of this meeting is more fact-finding, not argumentative in nature. Um, if it comes across as that, um, we apologize in advance. Um, so my question to you is, and I presented this question to the mayor two weeks ago at lunch, do we know the length of the train? Yes. And what would so that actually, be? So actually, just so you know, the train was actually built and it was selected purposefully to make sure that it can fit downtown San Rafael blocks. Okay, so when it comes into the station, it's going to be between intersections. Correct. Okay. At the beginning, this is before my time when I read the files, they were very concerned that if they get trains with two or three or four or five, you know, uh, vehicles, that it can stop and it can stop the many blocks. And they said that is not going to be, you know, acceptable. So the, the train that we ordered under construction now is two trains. Okay. And these are independent diesel units. So they don't have one that it's pulling in. And both of these, when they pull in into a station, they don't need to turn around. The other one will pull it out. Okay. And that's how wide, how long they are. Okay. Is to, to, be to fit within a, a city block. Okay. okay. In San Rafael. And a follow-up question to that is um, the question that Richard had earlier regarding the, the four times per hour, you're planning two southbound, so every half an hour a southbound train will come? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got to return that train northbound. Correct. Oh, so not that train. Another train is yeah. going. There but, is but there'll be two southbound be per, per hour and two northbound. And so you must have pullouts designated so that trains can bypass each Correct. other. So can I answer your question yeah, in a please. bigger way? Yeah. How do you then operate on a single track where all these trains are passing each other, correct? Yeah, yeah. So the way, the way we are designing is because we will have five sets of train running up and down, if you can picture that, there are places where these trains meet each other head on, which of course we don't want them to hit on. <laughs> so we have what we call sidings. And sidings are just like a vehicle pull-out area where you pull out and, uh, and you know, I pass you as a, as a faster vehicle. And these pull-outs are the areas where we will have the trains pass each other. Nobody pulls over and stops. And they are, uh, we're in the final design of those locations. Um, you know, we will have some double track in San Rafael as it's going through here, as trains are going by each other. 
And the major, the first major pullout under design right now will begin in Novato, and it will go north, and then we'll have four of those in the system. Okay. And that's how the trains go by each other. That's why the operational timing is very critical. That's why we're in the construction, and we cannot go back and start the planning, let alone design, because we're building these on a very, very precise location. That's a great segue to question number three in the construction. And uh, again, I'm asking direct questions. I hope you don't find I'm trying not to make them fancy, and I apologize if I'm elaborating. Um, as, as you're well aware, um, the tracks around... Um, McInnes Parkway have been submerged for a number of times on a number of occasions, not just by king tides, but uh, at other times. Um, and so obviously uh, tra trains don't operate when the, train, when the, the tracks are submerged. Um, and so what is planned to address the fact, or is it planned to just not have operations when tracks are submerged? During the flood time, we will have to comply with very strict federal and state safety rules, which is inspect the track, see if they're passable, and if they're not because of excess water, because debris might be washed, we stop. Okay. We did not want to change the environment and the sensitive environmental issues, but now, for example, uh, the picture Richard sent me, imagine if we would now raise those yes. because we want to just go at very high speed and we don't care. Well, now we're creating all kinds of different issues, correct? Mm -hmm. So the answer is we're trying to leave the environment as is. Mm -hmm. and if our, it affects our operation. It is the price you pay a few times every many years that you have king tide or 100-year store. Great, thank you. That was a great, and that, I feel like that was a very direct answer. I appreciate that. That's great. All you get from me is direct answer. I don't know if you're just getting very direct questions. <laughs> it seems like you're getting a hundred year storm every ten years or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Bob, you, you know, this whole hundred year probability thing really doesn't work in Maureen. I agree with you. I've, I've we're getting it much more frequently. I've got a, uh, a, di a, a question on a different tax. Sure. Uh, we hear about Caltrain, mm -hmm. and on an unfortunately pretty regular basis, people are getting killed on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Some are probably accidents, and it sounds like quite a few of them are suicides. What are you doing about that? You know, you're raising an outstanding question. And uh, one of the items the board of directors and me and staff are working on is education. Um, you know, our generation, <coughs> Richard is way too young, but <laughs> our, gen <laughs> our generation <laughs> has been exposed to train, but Richard's generation has not. And then You're Richard's kids' generation <laughs> don't even have a clue. So what we started last year is we have one full-time person. All she does is we begun from the elementary schools, and everywhere the construction is going, we have gone to that elementary school. We've created Spanish-English um, safety packages. We meet with the kids, with the principals, with the teachers. We just finished meeting with every school, I am told, in Sonoma and Marin who are along the construction. So we're beginning there, and we're going to continue that education all the way to college. The next phase will be with the businesses. The next one will be with the bicyclists. You know, this is now something everybody needs to learn because how many times on Civic Center Drive, when you cross those tracks, you even slow down? You don't because you haven't seen a train. Now there will be. So we got to get everybody back into that. Uh, we're going to have very, very heavy media campaign, probably a year before operation. I'm hoping to use the existing campaign tools, you know, the homeowner associations, the PTAs. You know, we don't want to create new organizations. We want to give the material to people who are already organized. Um, so that's one, just to teach them, right? Because... How many times have you seen bicycles <laughs> run a stop sign? Mm. 
I'm thinking that I might need just one person, just like we have one dedicated person for schools. We might need one educator for bicyclists because, you know, you you go around these gates. When the gate is done, you lose everything. Can you teach them about, a little more about that's, bicycling? That's the person that's going to create the education. Is the right. first yeah, guy that's right. that yeah. runs around and ends up plastered on the front of the train. Right. He's yeah. going to be your best right. educator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, you know, yeah. videos. I don't know and about that. Third, third, Darwinism involved. Right. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the third part of our, our, our campaign is, which is which is, um, I saw the statistics in California, um, there are rail accidents all the time. Fifty percent of those, I was told, is because of trespassing. Mm -hmm. People who do not, you know, observe that, you know, active train, don't trespass. You know, I'm not even talking suicide, I'm talking about people who put their headset on and just start We're regularly seeing um, trespassers right. so, on your tracks. Um, so we're going to, that's going to be another one. The ones on trespa- on the suicide, um, we're contacting other uh, transit agencies. I saw recently Caltrain has signs that's, that actually has a toll-free phone number has a phone number where you can actually call and get psychological help. So, you know, we're going to try our best working with the police department, fire departments. You see somebody wandering around in the tracks. Don't just assume they know what they're doing. Maybe they're thinking of doing the wrong thing. So education is going to be very huge for us. That's one of the reasons maybe, yeah, we're, we're going to have the, um, the issue of quiet zones out in the public for, for debate uh, because you're right, there are trade-offs and some are very unfortunate, but you can picture the, the guys with the bikes, so to speak, uh, come to mind. So we want to make sure that we are safe, uh, certainly. Yeah, and the 96 to 110 yeah. decibel train horn is incredibly loud, incredibly loud. Now, um, my, my question is, I've seen various types of railway crossings. Mm-hmm. Some only extend over the particular lane that you're coming, you know, mm-hmm. the oncoming lane. Others are longer arms that mm-hmm. cut down on, so that if you're a cyclist and you were going to, you know, go around a barrier, one is much easier to use as a slalom course, if you will. The <laughs> other is much more difficult because it covers both lanes. So have you taken a look at the crossing arms that will completely, so that a person would have to do I mean, it's such an enormous job to try to go through the intersection. It wouldn't just be a, a quick little, you know, right. mm-hmm. detour. So, let's see, now you've got the engineer in me. <laughs> so what we have is, if this is the rail crossing, right? Correct. And here is the lanes, right? So here is one direction. Here is your traffic, right? So, what, what the thinking is, there is no one size fit all. We look at every intersection tip individually and based on the traffic engineer of that city telling us what is happening. So there's, it's not a shop, you know, we just kind of say, yeah, because if this thing comes here, you're done, right? So in San Rafael, what it appears we're going to end up doing in most places, again, this is unique, is it is going to be what we call quad gate. Quad gate is four. So if the rail is coming, you typically have this arm does this, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. So let's say, you know, it does this, okay? And then for this direction, it does this, mm-hmm. right? Well, what happens if, you know, somebody decides to do this? Mm-hmm. Exactly. In a car right. or a bike. Right. So, right. 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 Yeah. so one of the items, but it all has to fit in, is, well, maybe we install medians, <coughs> right? And this median prevents people from doing that. And maybe we do 
what we call quad gate, which mm -hmm. is you also put in gates here. So we had a walk with the, with the federal and the state authorities uh, last year at the request of uh, um, San Rafael Council because they were really pushing for uh, getting the answers on the quiet zone. So I was very pleased when both federal authorities called FRA, Federal Rail Authorities, and the state officials, their California Public Utilities Commission, these are the two that we have to report to. They came and we started from um, whistle stop and we walked all the way, every single intersection, and we agreed and they approved our thinking. And you know, the public works director and his traffic engineer were with us from San Rafael. So we have a specific design for each of these intersections, okay? And some places we also will have pedestrians have to stop because so this is for roads, but if you have sidewalk. you know, sidewalks, then this bicyclist can do that. So we even have, will have barriers, you know. Okay. So, but there is, just so you all know, and there is so much we can do, if you're committed, to go around this, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know what? Internally, well, I want to keep. I give you. Track. I give you one idea. One of the things that's happening right now in Sonoma um, is, um, and it will change. With now, law enforcement is learning. Is um, you've all been reading in the newspapers about the stealing of the copper wires? Yeah. Right? Well, they've been stealing some of that. <coughs> in Sonoma. So what happens is when that copper wire is stolen, the contact is disconnected and the rail has the gate. It, it thinks I need to go to a safety mode and it shuts down the street, Great. Mm -hmm. you see. Right. And in Petaluma, we had, I think like 30% of the calls were like vandalism. And again, it comes to law enforcement, education, right. you know. Uh, did I answer it? Yes, you did very well. Thank you very much. Uh, forgive me, I did want to get through some very key questions that I know are on residents' mind. The next one is number four, train noise figures. And the reason I want to give a little bit of context here to bring this up, in the EIR, you identified a very specific number of uh, locations or residences that would be impacted or severely impacted. Um, I, I, for your time, I do recognize. Um, I, I think when any reader would be surprised by the low numbers of, uh, it seemed remarkably low. I, 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 I questioned them myself because I looked at uh, the numbers between, say, Civic Center Drive, uh, McKinney's Parkway. It was a remarkably low number. When you have properties like the Gables, you have a number of people in Vista Marin, you have Rebel Villages, San Rafael Meadows. And there is a very specific definition of impacted and severely impacted, and it's based on the actual noise the train will be generating uh, at certain distances. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to be able to understand what is impacted. You can't tell unless you know the specific volume of this train based on the train, the model, and the speed it will be traveling at, and whether it will be in acceleration or deceleration mode, which may change the noise dynamics. So can you, first of all, We've asked for this several times. I've been asking for this since August, and I have not had an answer apart from generic figures on diesel multiple units. Not all trains are the same. Can you give us the figures? How loud will this train be at different speeds at 50, 100, and 150 no. yards out? No, I cannot. This is all covered in the EIR. It's not. You ask a question, I give you an answer. I won't interrupt you. All the noise information is in the environmental document. That's all the information it is. Okay. We're not planning to do additional noise study mm -hmm. based on your specific needs and requests and assumptions and statements that I'm not agreeing with. You may not agree with them, but Farhad, I think that I think when a reasonable person looks at this as a heavy diesel train, I know it's a quieter a model, but it's a heavy diesel. The distance of the houses at the gables, I don't know what the exact distance is, but I believe it's under 100 yards. And a typical DMU in acceleration mode will be over the threshold, which causes moderate You're or severe impacts. You're making statements that are not fact, factual. You're making statements. Mm -hmm. You're making statements like a reasonable person knows. Mm -hmm. You're emphasizing on words that mm -hmm. it's heavy diesel. What mm -hmm. does heavy diesel mean? 
Heavy diesel, it has to be heavy diesel to run on the tracks. It's a different class of diesel motor. We're getting into no, details, no, you're but the important incorrect. thing is the noise. No, it's not important. It's the various buzzwords you use to get people excited, Richard. All noise studies is in the EIR. Heavy diesel, this is, that's, that's, this train is the quietest, quietest train ever built. It's in the EIR, and you can study it. How could there you have no arrived at the fact this would, would make such low impact if you didn't know how loud the train was? We know how loud the train is. You can't tell me. It's in, I, I, don't re- I, I just told you there are thousands of pages of environmental impact I've read it. report. I, I'm, I'm sure you did. I don't have those memorized, nor it's what I do. The information is there. We're not doing additional noise study for one particular property or one area. We're done with the it's, planning. It's not, We're in it's construction. Multiple, it's multiple, Farhad. It's multiple areas that are within 50 to 100 yards of that track. We're done with planning and environmental process. We're in construction. So you have no consideration at this point for these residents' concerns? That is very uh, improper statement for you to say, I have no consideration. No, that is not. That's a false statement. This is the kind of words you use in your emails, and then you say, why don't you answer? These are set-up questions. You're not asking questions. You're accusing us. You build the base. You accuse us, and then you say, now answer it. That's not how it's going to work. He asks me a straightforward question. I give him an answer. He doesn't say, now that we know so many people are going to be killed because it's factual and foreseeable, what are you going to do about that? He doesn't start that way. You start that way, Richard. Mm-hmm. I'd like to and set the context for a question. No, That's you don't set the context. You set us up. And I'm not here to get set up or my agency. I'll be happy to answer straightforward questions, can but I, not a set up. Can I ask sorry, a straightforward please. question? I think that, frankly, I don't think that this kind of conversation is particularly no. fruitful. I mean, we've heard it now four or five times. Right. I asked both of you to just please tone it down. We hear, we've heard both sides. Uh, straightforward question number one. How many grade crossings are going to be in the part of the track that's going to actually be built? How many? Grade crossings. What do you mean? At grade crossings of streets. Oh, everything is at grade crossings but how many? throughout the system. How many are there? Oh, m- dozens. There are about 14 in San Francisco. You 14 mean? 14 in San Francisco. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Throughout uh, the system, so dozens. 35 or something. Yeah. Second question is, what's the status of the bike and pedestrian trail? For SMART? For SMART. Mm -hmm. As I understood it, the original concept was to build a multi-use path that was parallel to the train tracks. Correct. But but uh, I understand that's been compromised, and I was Mm, asking if you could tell me. Don't know if I would use the word compromise. SMART, as part of its project, is also committed to build a bicycle pedestrian path where it can parallel with tracks, where it cannot with the approval of local agencies on the roadway, on the surface roadway, where that is not possible to actually go on private property, if environmentally possible, if we have the property and we have the money. The idea is try at the, our goal, our vision is to have a bicycle pedestrian path throughout. What I can do is prepare for you a specific area of the projects that we are either doing or we are part of doing. We have projects that are taking place from Marydale to Civic Center and coming down. I can send all of that to you. I can send it to the mayor and mayor can then share it with you. Sure, of the two, three projects that are in the, in the works. Is it, is it correct that it's the Would you like cost concern? considerations? The, 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 the vision is not going to be doable for a while. Or? Oh no, no, it's not. It's not the vision. It's sometimes we don't have property. Sometimes we cannot. Um, sometimes it's not environmentally acceptable to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you might have a wetland right next to a roadway. Well, on paper it looked great to put a bike path there, but in the real world you can't do that. Mm-hmm. So we go back and say, what do we do now? So I get you. So would you like something, uh, let's see, the area I would have. I tried to get it to you. Your neighborhood is around Civic Center, if I'm saying it right. So I've got to see if I can cover that area for you. Yeah. 
I, I get that to you, Bob. Thank you, sir. Um, we were also curious about the pedestrian thoroughway between in San Rafael Meadows, which runs right now. There's a footpath, so a lot of us take that footpath from San Rafael Meadows to get to Civic Center, to get to under the under the under yeah the yeah. And we're wondering what the status of that's going to be because I'll check there's some you. areas that are very tight. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering. So specifically, I'm sorry. So yeah, from specifically, San from like uh, from the both sides of 101. Yeah, right. specifically, there, there's a footpath from uh, North San Pedro Road, North San Pedro Road where it meets Los Ranchitos. So there's okay. a footpath there that Correct. goes behind Redwood Village. Correct. All the way down, we can go from there all the way to the farmer's market, uh, walking. Okay, and, under um, the freeway. Under, under the, the freeway. freeway. Uh-huh. And so it'd be good to know what what plans are made for because most of the neighbors would – would like to have that footpath still in place uh -huh. so that we wouldn't have to go walk all the way down Marydale and, you know, add another half a mile. Let me I'll check that, Janet, yeah, and I'll get back. Yeah. I'll yeah. give all that to the mayor so you can yeah. have it all. And um, this might be in the ER, but um, I was wondering if there is, you can give me the name of a train that's comparable to the trains that are going to be going through our backyard, is there any train system comparable in the U.S. that you can tell me, oh, look, check out, you know, I don't know, Metropolitan Denver or whatever, <laughs> and we have a comparable train. Is there any example? I'll find, I'll find out for you, yeah. and here is why I'm, I'm not giving you a quick answer. This train has never been built before. Mm -hmm. This train is, is meeting a noise standard that hasn't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. That will arrive in the future. Yeah, that's how quiet we are. When the board of directors, before my time, decided to figure out what kind of train they want, mm -hmm. they put environmental issues as their number one, which had to do with the noise and had to do with the uh, clean air. Mm -hmm. Then they put in the number of passengers and comfort and the bicycle, and then they put in the price because you have to come up with criteria, mm -hmm. right? And it just so happened that the firm who had the cleanest and, the, you know, mm -hmm. and all of that happened to be the cheapest as well. Mm -hmm. But their criteria started from an environment. Yeah. Um, so I'll find out if there is such a thing. But yeah. again, it's a noise standard that doesn't have it. Right. And but this you is might, a, uh, oh. you might also. You mean from noise point of view, right, Janet? Yeah, I would like to, uh, if it would be possible to see where a similar type train is running in kind of a metropolitan mm -hmm. area just to get an idea. And this is not a comment, or uh, this is not to make anybody defensive, but my house is just yards away from the tracks. And I have friends that are realtors in Marin that have been mm -hmm. selling in Marin for years, and they've told me point blank, Janet, a lot less people are interested in your neighborhood now because they know the train's coming through. And um, so one of my close realtors said, "You're going to your house is going to probably depreciate by about fifty thousand, just because people won't want to live." And this is nothing. Mm -hmm. This is just a statement. So when you see us, of course, some of us getting emotional about this, it's because we're going to be losing money. We, we may have a harder time selling our house when, if we ever retire, or decide to move out. I mean, all these things really are going to impact, right. especially right. the right. neighborhoods that are represented. And I'm here. hearing, just so you know, I'm hearing the opposite. There are people mm -hmm. that want to buy homes and businesses mm -hmm. next to a station, next to mm -hmm. a train. Now, the our generation, yes. richest generation, don't like a single occupant car. Mm -hmm. They like public transit, and there is a lot of... Uh, efforts going on in Sonoma with people asking how soon is mm. this happening. So keep that part of it in mind as well. Yeah, we're not seeing it. Right. And I think, <laughs> I think one of the things is, uh, as part of the sentiment here, and forgive me if, uh, you know, the tone, but I think the sentiment here, Farhad, is these are sacrifices that people are making. And I think it's, it's a great sacrifice if it's worthwhile. And it comes to the last point. Is, yeah, you know, just, I don't want to interrupt you, but on the sound, I just want to mention because I went to... Uh, I've seen it before, but it comes to mind because I just went to the forum. There was a presentation by Smart. And you, you might talk about the tracks because the tracks are unique and, and certainly have a sound impact mm -hmm. as well. And then, two, our first delivery is going to be in, uh, in 2014 where you can actually witness the car. 
or the train rather, it'll be you know it'll be experimental with running back and forth. The tracks are are unique in some ways, are they not? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Far has that sure. presentation also has pictures of what it will look like, which I think yeah, I've seen people want to see. They, they're still seeing in their minds the old choo 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 with all the noise and clickety clack. This is not like that. We understand, and that's why yeah. we'd like to just yeah. know. If we just know the explicit yeah. accessible yeah. level, this whole yeah. argument is moot potentially. And, and this will be a real boon for people, especially up north. For us, yes. um, as you can see, mo- most of us don't plan to go that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, most of us are going to the city, if anything. Right. So for us, we don't see the boon in terms of the, the appearance of the train just because we'll probably be using it a lot less than people that are coming. Well, I think, I mean, it's just I the think that's the that's point well. I was trying to, if I may finish the point. Maybe yeah, before. I just want to make sure we were clear on the sound. The point I was trying to make is, you know, I think the fundamental concern is, a big sacrifice is happening in some neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And the sacrifice is, is great if it's worthwhile. And I think many of us are struggling, particularly, not all of us, some of us, okay, just me, you might say, but I think everyone <laughs> is stable. <laughs> you know, we are taking hits. My next door neighbor has had his house in the market for six months in the summer last year, didn't budge, no, not a single offer, and it was at a good price. Um, he's just put it on again, nothing. Um, but we are basically seeing something being put into place that is adversely impacting our situation, whether it's noise, house price, traffic, a number of issues, environment. And I think where we're coming from here is it would be great if this is worthwhile, but when we look at the ridership figures, which are very low, um, and the amount that's being spent of public money, $1.2 billion with the bond interest, I know it's like six fifty, seven hundred million million is the outlay. Is that correct? Keep going. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know so exactly. So far, we haven't agreed on anything. <laughs> and many of your statement continues to be totally meter, not meter. Okay. Oh, no, I was, mid- I was making a statement just to know, try and show where we are coming from. The sentiments and concerns right. here are, you know, we, you know, everyone has made a sacrifice, whether it's a, a quarter percent sales tax for everyone in this room, but there are others who obviously are nearer the tracks that are more greatly impacted. And the concern, I'm really just trying to help um, you understand and not making a question but I think it's useful to understand people's motivations and where they're coming from. I think that's a useful thing for you to be able to, uh, uh, what's the word, sympathize, uh, emote. But it, our concern is it would be great if this is a worthwhile project. We still see questions. The ridership figures were disputed by Judy Arnold, uh, the, 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 the Dowling figures. So we don't see um, robust ridership figures. And I don't know what is the fare box recovery that's projected. What is the uh, the burden that the train will have, given that it's going to serve a relatively small number of people? I bet your own figures somewhere in the region of 3,000 people will be using it for the next five years, compared to hundreds of thousands using 101. And so, are you on track with your budget? And what is your fare box recovery ratio? So, having the, for the record, since you're taping. Disagree with everything you said. Mm-hmm. Okay, all your assumptions are false. You make statements. The fact that ne- your neighbor house hasn't sold, mm-hmm. maybe you haven't noticed what has happened to the real estate market, has nothing to do with smart. Has to do with the real estate market. Yeah, maybe, so maybe. connecting this to that, it's not May, Richard. It is. But to answer your question, the project is on budget, and the estimate. You know, remember, this is about a service that does not exist. The estimate, the last estimate I saw in our by our financing is the uh, fare box recovery is in the you know 24, 25 percent. But before you you say, oh my God, what does that mean? No, no, I just no, 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 no. It doesn't matter because you used in the number and do something else with it. Let me explain this. Public infrastructure is subsidized by you. There is not a single public infrastructure that we as taxpayers don't subsidize. Let me explain. You pay for the bus service through property tax and sales tax. You pay for the freeways and local roads through 35 to 40 cents of gas every time you pump out. The opponents of SMART use something very smart. They said, well, how come we're subsidizing you? Well, you're subsidizing every form of public transit. In order for you to have a public transit that is frequent and affordable, you have to subsidize it. Otherwise, it becomes an elite, you know, tickets be $100. So try to imply that, oh, my God, what does that mean? 
it is no different than any other public transit in the entire country that is subsidized by one form or another. We understand. The and well, you you don't say it when you when you set up that whole argument. No, we understand. This and whether three thousand people go on it or five thousand people go on it or ten thousand, whatever that number. 70% of the people in Marin said we're sick and tired of being stuck in 101. We want an alternative. They might not write it, but they want an alternative. That's why this project is being built. Hopefully, we will get a lot more people and take load off everybody else, and that's the goal of this project. I, I was thinking about this exact topic when he was started asking it. Um, I'm... I'm confused and need to have more understanding about affordable housing and what taxes they're exempt from. And so I'm also, so this ties into this, but I'm wondering if the property tax because of Prop 13 can only be raised on the property owners a certain amount each year. So if there has to be more tax to cover the train, do you have to vote on a bond or something? Because that's the only way you can add to the property tax, isn't it? No. Uh, SMART has nothing to do with affordable housing or development. I, I know, I, well, but they're not going to pay tax. No, no, we have nothing to do with a land use decision that happens outside us. That is a city or a county's right. decision. If your question is, you only said you're recovering 25%, right. where does the difference right. come from? Right. It comes from the quarter cent sales tax that people have already voted on. If the first part of it goes through construction, the second part of it goes through operations. That's where the money comes from, mm -hmm. as well as state and federal money. Okay, so if there isn't enough money... There is enough money. Okay, but if there isn't, does that mean something has to no, be voted on? No, I don't like accept your, your analysis if there is not enough money. What if there is a mega earthquake? What happens? But, but one of the things was we voted on the quarter percent sales tax and then the economy crashed Correct. and it didn't provide you with as much money so, as you planned on. So that was a what if there is not Correct. enough money. So what did the board do? I don't know. What did they do? So the board did what every, every business owner had to make a decision. The smart board said, you know, we thought we we're going to get this much, but we're now getting this much. So the board made a decision, and they shrunk the construction and the operation of the project to what they can afford, which is north of Santa Rosa to downtown San Rafael. We have enough to build and operate. If the economy improves and we get more money, we go further, north or further south or both. What year do you start operations? I'm sorry? Which year do you start Probably operations? Probably 2000, late 15, early 16. Mm -hmm. is oh, it, does, oh. the, does the quarter percent sales tax, is it perpetual or does it no, sunset? No, it, it expires 27, another 13 years. And every transportation sales tax in California gets renewed, uh, up to the voters. Mm -hmm. But the there, is, there is no, I think LA County has one that is forever, uh, is what I was told. But everybody else in the Bay Area, you renew your transportation sales tax based on you see, you like what you get, and, you know. so that, that and not a single one has ever failed. So that, oh, well, that's interesting. Because it put, people it put see... You, it puts you under... Some no, because you see what you get. You see the difference. I was just, just thinking that it puts you under some pressure to, to manage this so that you do have high ridership and... and it's Correct. It, and it, it forces us to act like a business. Because otherwise, cause voters are going to give you a grade on it when the tax runs out. No, I mean, it's not that we're going to... You know, we're not magicians. We provide a service... You know, my best marketing tool is called Highway 101. <laughs> I don't need a better tool. Your choice. It takes you one hour, 40 minutes well, to get from Santa Rosa to San Rafael. The problem you're facing is that if, if some of the visions that we've seen about building 600 or so housing units at the, clog, the most clogged part of 101, the, the, the traffic on 101 is going to be worse, not better. So maybe That's the train will alleviate some of it. Not your bailiwick, but, but yeah. you'll probably blame for some of it. 
why would I be blamed for housing projects? And part smart has nothing to do with it. It's partly station area plan. It's but that has nothing to do with smart. So is there any relationship between the acceptance of residential units being put into plans at different station areas and funding being released to SMART? No. We have no relationship. We have nothing to do, nothing, okay, to do with anything that goes in a city or county. You elect city councils. You elect board of supervisors. They decide what's good for that community. Now, are they using SMART as an opportunity? Perhaps. But has nothing to do with SMART. We don't get dinged for or rewarded if anything happens outside our area. So your only source of income is the sales tax and state and federal funding? Correct. And the tickets. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. I mean, on top right. of the tickets. And so there is no way. So exactly how are we paying for bus service? How is everybody paying for bus service? Every time you get your tax bill, yes. your property tax, a percentage of that goes to marine transit. And every time you go spend money on grocery or everything else, a percentage of the sales tax goes also to bus service. But SMART isn't going to get any of our property tax no. money? No. Okay. Great. Plus, they also get stayed, they get federal, yeah, okay. and the bus recovery, and the fare recovery, correct. Okay. Well, it's uh, 11.30. Um, there's no set time, but it is 11.30, and we're all busy folks. Yep. So I don't know if we're at the uh, point at the I'm good. I've done finished uh, my questions. Uh, by the way, thank you for your time. Yes, I have thank you, thank you very much. much. Sure. Yeah, we've got a fair amount of ground here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, please see this as the start of a relationship. You may not see it as the best start. <laughs> I hope you see it as the start well, let's, of some let, let's say if this is how you want to get to a second date. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you your generation deal? needs to learn from you know, <laughs> yeah. Brian's generation on how to get the question asked the right way. And Bob's, you know, it's... No. We'll bit. train That's the youngsters. Okay. That's yeah. all right. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate yeah, your you. time. I, I'm sorry. You know, I just wanted to be straightforward. You know, uh, there is a train coming to town. Many positives. Some people have some questions. My job is to build it as it was approved, deliver it. If there is a way to take care of somebody's home 100 feet away for a specific reason, at that time, I'll be happy to look into it and work with you. But what I cannot do, as you wouldn't for your software you know, business, is you won't let people set you up and then drag you into something that it goes way back. We spent years fighting this thing, and now it's a reality, and my job is to deliver it. I'm spending your tax money, and it's my job to spend it wisely. You know. And we're, we're not here, any of us, to get into any kind of dialectic, I can assure you that. I think our major concern is safety and what, how are the impact on the neighborhoods, the noise and the safety are like primary you know, and traffic I, I need your help on the safety. Mm -hmm. When we get closer at least a year before operation, if you could you know, host the greater San Rafael neighborhood meeting Mm -hmm. We'll come in, we'll talk safety, we bring our experts. Safety is paramount for us, mm -hmm. and really, especially the younger generation. Mm -hmm. A 69, 70, 40 mile an hour train is mm -hmm. very fast. It's not a bicycle, it's not a car. You know, so yeah. we need to educate everybody to respect this. Totally so we agree. need your help to get it done right. Yeah, and that's, that's totally correct. It, it would help us a lot to know how loud the train's going to be in, in context to how we go about educating the people in the neighborhoods about this train. I mean, it would be helpful to know what's it going to sound like on the tracks. I mean, none of us know that. Fourteen, when we talk more explicitly right. about quiet zones and y'all yeah, involved right. in that. By then, we'll actually have a train running, so we'll go and Correct. Um, put it in that context. You know, we'd be happy to invite you. I'm sure the mayor will tell me to do that when the train arrives next year. You know, this is the first pilot. The way it happens is the first prototype arrives. You know, we're already doing a lot of crash testing, you know, um, 
you know, we're, which uh, we are we are crash testing the seeds, you know, the shell, and all of these is being done in the laboratory. Mm-hmm. Once it passes, only once it passes, then we will accept it and it will be assembled. And at this point, we're looking at you know, sometime in spring of 2014 where the first prototype will arrive for us to now test out in the field. We're using and different seats. So some of them are the seats. Are they different seats? They're brand new seats. They've never been done before. Because I know the train's going to Toronto as well. Are the, the seats specific to Specific Maroon? for us. Our, okay. our policy makers, when they, when they did not want somebody else's seat, oh. they, well, you know, we're Marine and Sonoma, so we get our things done our way. And yeah, when you get things well. your way, you are building something brand new. And that's why the seed test, you know, failed twice. Because once the weld was not strong, mm-hmm. the other one, it went too far back. And these are the learning. That's I'm what sure you do, so. you know. Yeah. So in 2014, we'll invite you. <coughs> you come up to the yeah. test track, we'll blow the horn, and you, you can... And I can stand there all the tracks, and you can... Yeah, you can yeah. 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 We'll, 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 we'll go for a little ride. Yeah, yeah. We'll flag it out. No, no <laughs> tickets. We get you there free. <laughs> okay. But I appreciate your time, and thank you very okay. much. Thank and you. anything you need through the mayor's office, let me know. And okay. If I can do it, I'll do it. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we do want to make this is uh, safe, as uh, Farad mentioned, and, and as unobtrusive as possible. So we're all in the same boat, believe me. That's why. Yeah. Oh, Barbara, Barbara has I recorded the conversation. I just was letting you know. Is that acceptable to you? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Barbara is overseeing uh, specifically as it pertains to the issues you got in, in uh, specifically San Rafael. So we're all uh, attuned to this thing and uh, appreciate your questions. They're, they're mm-hmm. relevant. Thank you. We're all concerned about it. Um, and we want to be prepared for it. So if I may, Mr. Mayor, ask you a question that will not be easily asked nor easily answered, I'm sure. <laughs> um, sure, go ahead. And that pertains to, in Farha's discussion of the progression of SMART, there was a time where it was an idea, a vision. Oh, right. And then there was a time where there was some sort of public response prior to even right. the funding, prior to anything, um, and it seemed to me, as Richard was trying to allude to, that it was kind of putting the cart before the horse, that people could actually raise a lawsuit before they even knew about what was happening. whether or not it even was voted for. Um, and so uh, he said that that time frame came and went, you know, it, it's been decided upon. Right. Using that same mentality, visioning the vision of, of the housing, the plan that's in place, um, what time frame do you see for public comment slash intervention via, you know, litigation, should we choose that option, um, um, on any of your, A, the Civic Center Area Station plan, and B, any upcoming development at those proposed sites? You tell me when you receive... Um and proposals. Uh, we're not in the business of building property. So, okay. so it's a little hard to predict because we don't know who might uh, think it's a good idea and then okay. explore their idea. Okay. So I, like Cara, I'm, I'm pretty straight on this stuff and I, I'm not trying to be basic, but I don't know of any proposals, so it's a little hard to react. I would talk about his timetable, though. I think it's exactly right. That is, you're not going to go out to the voters with no plan, no idea, no EIR, no nothing and say, do you approve this or not? You wouldn't do it that way. I wouldn't do it that way. I would go to the voters only after I've explored all those possibilities so I can, I can tell and answer as many questions as possible come out of that process. And the EIR process is, as you know, pretty extensive. So I, I would go through that so I could answer the questions before going to the voters. So I think the, the cycle uh, that they, they went through, and I wasn't involved at the time, but right. it makes sense to me. Okay. Well, I guess the point I was trying to make was I think... Everybody is accepting of the fact that SMART's coming. I was very impressed by Harlan, and, and I think the more information that is allowed to be disseminated from individuals like Farhead who are in the know, have the facts, and are able to get it out to the communities, I think yes. the train, it will eliminate a lot of this misconception about the train. I think the train will have a, a, a better acceptance, I couldn't agree more. if you will. Let, let me address your earlier question. Okay, real quick, hold that thought. Okay. So right. getting back is... Um, 
along that same line as right. it pertains to right. the housing and wanting to get this information out to, again, the neighborhoods that will be impacted by right. the 600 plus units that were proposed within a one block stretch, block and a half stretch at McGinnis and Civic Center Drive. Um, I just, I'm curious as to how, what kind of... Oh, it'll be extensive. I mean, let, let's think about, uh, let's think about, although it's not precisely related, but let's think about the process for a moment uh, for the sports complex. I want to bring that up because it's in proximity. That went on for six years. That was somebody proposed this, and then it went through EI. EIR, CEQA, okay. our design review, it was through our uh, planning uh, commission and ultimately city council. Same will be here. If somebody comes to, let's say, a, and there's nothing I'm aware of, first of all, but let's say that they come and they say, well, we think there should be an office building right next door. Well, then it's going to go through an entire process, which includes your point, which is well taken with regard to the public uh, input on that, as well as anything else it might be. It's not just going to happen. There will be an extensive process on each of those. Can you reassure us that you will this time by law? represent us yes. in a way that we, we feel <laughs> that we didn't see representation on August the 25th? Well, um, I, again, wanting just yeah. to get this one specific Please. point answered, um, he said there was a specific period whereby if the public had any kind of concern and if they felt they needed to litigate their right. issues, there was a window of opportunity. Yeah, that window came and went. I would like right. to know when the window is coming and when it's going well, so that we could respond. And that's that's my direct yeah. – yeah, yeah. I don't know how to ask it. In I, can, I can, I can uh, relate again to the sports complex only because it's just gone through the process and, and be and, identical. And may I interrupt you? And it's okay. not being sued. Well, I was going to say, um, there's a suit there, against remember, it yet went through extensive EIR okay. and then uh, public uh, uh, comment periods through the Divine Review, Planning Commission, and ultimately the City Council. Okay. Um, it was approved, uh, having gone through that process, for okay. various community benefit reasons. Uh, it uh, fell under a CEQA suit. Next Wednesday, uh, I am involved in a uh, settlement conference. So it's gone through that process. I don't know where that's going to go, okay. um, but that's part of the process. Uh, what I suspect will happen is settlement conference, we either will agree upon some additional considerations or not, in which case we may go to court. So that's, who knows? Okay. <laughs> you know, that's probably a year, but I'm just guessing. Okay. Your, your question is, that was done without the public alerted to the fact that the t clock was running. And by the time the public, at least the concerned public, found out the statute of limitations had already run. Yeah. It was a done deal. Yes. Yeah. The answer to your question is that the housing component, is, as Mayor Phillips just said, has got to go through a lot of steps, including an EIR, including the Planning Commission, including the City Council. And your job and my job is to pay attention and to go to those meetings and to stay in touch. Uh, we were not informed about the, the fact that the Citizens Advisory Committee was doing anything more than planning the station and maybe some landscaping and a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it comes out they're planning hundreds of units right. of housing. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me correct we you. We didn't even get that. We didn't get that. No, no. And when we found <laughs> out, it was at the last meeting, we went there and we kept to the city council 200 <laughs> strong, but by then it was a done deal pretty much. I mean, yeah. I was there. Seeing, there seeing that's played, let, me, let me just clarify but, one thing, if I could, because um, it's caused some confusion. I... I did inquire after we had our, our lunch on the issue because I was like, hmm, this, this issue of uh, the landscaping. Well, guess what? Uh, here's the point of confusion. It wasn't handled as well as I'd like, but guess what? There were two uh, issues that were being studied at the same time, one by SMART, and that is what should the station itself look like, including landscaping and whatever surrounds that, that station, period. And that's what you thought was this bigger issue of, uh, of the city saying, let's look at the vision for the, for the, the whole area. area. Yeah. It was overlapping two different organizations that is SMART and the city, looking at a similar area but not identical area. So it, um, it did cause some confusion. But we were very that. troubled because there was, not, there, there was no representation from any of our neighborhoods. Uh, well, the, the, the Re several, several meadows, meadows we had somebody but, but not just Marin, not Gables, not Marin Lagoon, yes. 
not she was. contemporary we're in. And Some, but not as many of the French kids. And, and you would think the Citizens Advisory Committee would reach out and bring in some people from the very neighborhoods that are most impacted. Here's, here's the way that works, and, and it's always a problem. <laughs> and this is our homeowners association. Yeah, Tell and, and we find, but here's what happens. Uh, we will we'll say, okay, we should have a commission or a group to, to look at a particular situation. And then it's getting the word out, and that can always be improved, but getting the word out, and then have applicants apply. We just filled a planning commission position. There were six. The city is 60,000, so that's a pretty Who small Who was selected? Um, Jerry, Jerry Boletto, Lincoln Hill. Mm -hmm. um, the point is that if in, we get a number of respondents, and I don't know how many there were, um, but from that group, then you make your selection, and but, but only from that, that group. So if nobody responds, and there could have been, it was in the paper, and it was this, that, and the other thing, and, and you could have responded better, and we could have done a better job, and you can go round and round on that issue. But you get the number of respondents, you pick, and here's the 16, and try to get a cross-section. We try to get, uh, when I do it, you know, try to get a cross-section of the uh, location of residents, male, female, age, all the various, you know, interest group factors, interest groups, all that stuff. There was no reason why we wouldn't. On the contrary, you would. Um, and it uh, perhaps didn't work as well as I guess we'd all like at this point with hindsight. But that's how it kind of kind of go through that. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we're all busy, and we're all doing our thing. And you may not have noticed the paper. I probably didn't notice the well, paper. I blame, frankly. you know, so. I mean, there might have been more communication and more education, but I blame us for not paying attention, too. And that's why I'm talking about this right now is yeah. we're, we're alert now and we're yeah. paying attention. I'm, I'm going to actually say something far has said. I don't accept what he's <laughs> well, and that's that's kind of water under the bridge. Yeah. So, so going forward and wanting to learn from the water that's passed under the bridge and realizing that there is a tremendous amount of interest in the upcoming and proposed things that, you know, now we have no ability to comment on, you know, that the previous plan that was accepted. Is there anything in place that from the city will right. then inform, are you now planning to include Marin Lagoon, the HOA, Here's the you know, the various people that are going to be impacted, that have voiced, they would like to have any kind of, you know, upcoming information, anything that the city has planned, any planning proposals, any this, that, or the other thing will have any impact as it pertains to that which maybe we should have, maybe we shouldn't have, again, water, but learning from right. the past, wanting to yeah. improve the really future. Good. Really good point. And, and a couple of things. One, you can go to the website and, and follow there. Two, uh, let's make sure that we have everybody's uh, an email address, the easiest way to communicate. Okay. And we'd be delighted to. I mean, believe yeah. me, I, yeah. I want to know what you folks think so we can make it as. I live in the area. <laughs> make I tell you what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, yeah. But you got to be there. No, so your yeah. point's well taken. <laughs> a project I'll call you, call you today. <laughs> yeah. A project idea will be brought in to our planning department. Okay. And uh, they have a list of, of neighborhood associations who want to be notified and plans of anything that's going through. Or I'm quite sure you'd say, hey, about just about northern San Rafael. We don't really care about what's going on in southern so, Barbara, what is, who is, what's the name of the department and who's the contact person so that we can put in them, all of our yeah, collected yeah, data? We'll have them uh, We'll just send it to the director, uh, Paul um, what is his Jensen. Name? Paul Jensen. Jensen. Okay. Yeah. That way you make Community sure. Community development. Yeah. If, you go on, yeah. if you go on the city's website, there's a place to, to sign up to be right. alerted about planning committee meetings and agenda and city council meetings and agenda. Right. Okay. And you get the uh, city manager's newsletter. Uh, how, how many people have signed up for that? Wow. I have. A lot. Yeah, I know, a lot. But, but okay. lately, yeah, no, I think more of us now. Yeah, after the fact. Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously, when yeah. it impacts you, suddenly, you know. Of course. That's because, right. like, as you said, most people are just doing their day-to-day -day stuff, and a lot of people that we've talked to, I'm sure, are totally unaware. You would not believe yeah. how many people are unaware of the smart train. They don't really. Yeah. But, yeah. but you will yeah. be hearing from them, I'm sure, because they yeah. have not paid any attention. It's a little I scary, have a but you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, since you brought up the soccer complex, um, is there anything to the rumor that the soccer complex is really going to be converted into a smart train maintenance center? Zero. Zero, zero, zero. Well, you should, you should clarify that. You, something you said, and maybe you can just reiterate, because I think I, when I heard it, it made abundant sense, is the zoning that was given 
Does and does not allow what? It, well, it, it's very, very restricted, first of all. And it wouldn't in- provide for that. It could not. The, the deed restriction would not allow for that. Two, we're purchasing a, a maintenance facility in Petaluma. Right. And as you oh, can imagine, okay. it's very expensive. You're starting to, we're dealing with uh, 50 to $100 million worth of trains, 50 initially. So these are not just little, you know, uh, pickup trucks. These are very technical, and they will be maintained at that facility. It's an expensive and you, operation. And for the whole thing's a billion dollars, you know, so this for is... For a train line that's this short, they're not going to have more than one maintenance facility. Yeah. Uh, How, well, what is the mileage they limited it to now? It's about 35 miles. Oh, that's right what now. I thought. Okay. Although we just got an extension, there's 12.5 million dollars for an extension up north to Windsor, up by the uh, by the airport. If you know where that's oh, okay. Airport. Oh, just that. So okay. And it starts at Cloverdale. And yeah, I know that station is slowly disintegrating. Yeah. My son used to live in Clover- yeah. Cloverdale. I watched that station. Well, we're, we're also seriously looking at and <coughs> trying to get uh, some assistance, quite frankly, uh, to extend to Larksville. That, that piece is unfortunate. That's not funded. Mm-hmm. But so that's, that's the problem of need, needing the overpass or the, because of Anderson. Yeah, Anderson Drive. Mm-hmm. Paid yeah, over. Right. And it's also $35 million bucks to do it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but not impossible. we got 12 5, you know, Senator. So it's not impossible. Great. I, I think it would be just great. What we want to hear is my presumption is your role is to keep that gentleman accountable. Is that correct assumption? I sit on the board. He's it's accountable the to the board, right. and he's hired and fired by the board. Um, and um, I, 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 having said that, I must say that that he knows what he's talking about. But is am I correct that your role is to hold him accountable as a board member? Yes. 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 Sit on the board. And I, I, I didn't say anything, but. Seventy percent of Marinites did not say they wanted it. Right. Yes. Sixty-two point something or other percent. Yeah, but that's it technically didn't pass in Marin. It passed in civil. It passed in the district. In the funding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was interesting that he said all of this work was done in 2006, but they didn't pass the funding until 2009. So nobody took this train seriously because exactly. nobody thought the train right. could be built right. because the counties kept turning it down. So supposedly this right. was all planned. It was all high theory. It's all yeah. theory, so it was hypotheticals. So mm-hmm. the amount of yeah. attention that a normal person would Lots. give to it in the uh, <laughs> modern-day was, government. Was very low. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. There were a majority voted in favor of funding, and so presumably the majority is, is satisfied that this was an addition. And if you drive on 101, as we all do, it's sort of self-evident, it seems to me, that we need mm-hmm. to do something. Mm-hmm. And on the surface, it, yeah. On the surface. There was also, surface within, surface within the last surface. like three, four years, um, a movement to try and undo that, and that failed, and I don't know what the numbers yeah, there were. Yeah, there was a repeal. that failed. Right, and well. the reason it, 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 the reason it, <laughs> it failed and to get it on the ballot was because all of these people didn't know what was going on, and if they had gone door-to-door well, in their neighborhood... There was more than that. <laughs> Somehow the, the threshold oh, I know, and the number of signatures yeah, yeah. magically raised. Okay. What prevented the uh, opponents from voicing their concerns? I have another I question, oh, yeah. and, and, and this, is, this is a just where do I go to find this information question? Right. Yeah. Okay, with this affordable housing, affordable where, housing where? Anywhere. I, I know a lot of it's in the county, but I know the one they're talking, talking about. Grady now, or what? Uh, I'm I talking about any, any okay. of the affordable housing. Uh, this is a general question. Where do you get the really straight, correct answer of what taxes the people that go into those houses are exempt from? There is a concern that they do not pay school taxes. And so there's different things going around. I heard different things at the Quiet and Safe meeting. And today, the whole page, if you haven't seen it, is all about affordable housing. And I've emailed this link to all the people on Quiet and Safe. But it says here, according to Bridge Housing, regarding the Marinwood Plaza development, developers pay all taxes that are levied as special assessments, which include special taxes that support the Dixie and San Rafael High School District, the Marin Community Service Districts, the Las Galinas Sanitary District assessments, and the assessment that pays for paramedic services. School impact fees will also be paid for both the residential and the commercial portions of the development. Now, the people in Marinwood that are trying to work with this and and 
figure out what's going on. They said last night at a meeting that this low-income housing is exempt from so I, think it's the re- I think it's the residents' taxes, not the builders to the developers' taxes. But, but the, so that's why I want to know who one, do I... One of the things you're talking about is what's called the developer's fee. Right. And, and, that, and that has to be specially in place in, by, by a city or a school mm-hmm. district or some other district. But is that a one-time? It, it, yes, one time, and it's, it's designed mm-hmm. to uh, alleviate the cost of building a new school to accommodate all the children that are going to live there. Okay, so... but. The, the school needs money every year. But they, they must pay property tax. I don't know the exact See, answer. that's what, who do I go to to find this go out? Go to the Marin Property Assessment. Okay. Yeah, that's all I wanted to know. That's what I thought. May, we okay. should respect your time. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.